Good morning, sound scientists. This is Leo from Strange Science Instruments. So check this out. We've got an M4 mixer right here, and I'm going to show you some of the ways that you can use it to make music. Okay, use case number one is very simple. We're just going to use this thing as a standard mixer. Okay, so off camera, I've got a dope for standard VCO, and I'm going to bring it into channel one here. And the volume is up, as you can see here. And as soon as I turn this up, you should be able to hear the channel. And since it's a stereo mixer, I can... I can pan left and right, and you should be able to hear that as well. And you've got four channels, so you can bring in four different sound sources, whether they're oscillators or effects or whatever else that you have in your system, and uh, mix them like that. Now, one nice feature that we've added to this mixer is that if you happen to have a drum machine like this, uh, this Digitact or a laptop or a synth or really anything with a stereo output, you can bring that into this mixer without using up the four channels. And you can do that by using these pass-through inputs. Okay? So to do that, all you have to do is plug that in like so. And this is connected to the Digitact. And as soon as I hit play, you should be able to hear the Digitact, and you still get master volume control over everything. You still have your sound, and the Digitact is coming through as well. Okay, so the second use case is a lot like the first one. I'm going to go ahead and plug in an oscillator into channel 1, and the same oscillator has a different output. So let's go ahead and use a, let's say, a triangle wave and bring that in on channel 2, okay? So, so far it's exactly the same as what we just saw on the first example, except this is the part where things start to get kind of interesting with the M4, because the volume and pan are both CV controllable on this mixer, okay? So what that means is you can take a, um, let's use this, let's use this guy. This is an LFO. And if I turn it up, you should be able to hear channel 1, channel 2. And what I can do is bring in this LFO and attach it to, say, pan. Now you should hear that channel 2 is panning. And channel 1 is still static. And so this obviously opens up some really interesting possibilities in that you can take any sound really you can take an an LFO and use it to modulate channel 1's volume and channel 2's pan position and and you don't have to actually use the knobs to do anything so this opens up a lot of interesting options uh, as far as sound design okay so carrying on from the previous example, what we can do is take the sound that we had just created in example two, but let's just say that the sound, maybe you want a little bit more filtering on the first channel, right? You think it's an interesting sound, but maybe it would sound better if it had some filtering. No problem. The direct output feature of the mixer actually allows a lot of creative flexibility. So what you can do is, let's go ahead and turn this up so you can hear it. Here's our sound. And if you plug something into this, it immediately stops coming out of the master output. That sound is now being routed here to this. So this opens up a lot of options in that now I can take this and send it off to a, say, filter, like our F1 stereo low pass filter. And right now we're only using one of the channels, but then you can take the output of that and bring it in on channel three. So essentially, as soon as you plug something into the direct output, it separates this channel out from the rest of the mixer, right? Channels two, three, and four still function as they always do, except channel one has now become like a high grade VCA, right? Now it's now separate from everything else. And that sound is being routed into this filter. And I'm going to go ahead and bring that sound back on channel three. And so now we should be able to hear that sound coming back on channel three here. And channel two still works as it does.
And keep in mind, you still have volume and pan control on channel 3. So if you wanted to do even more complex sounds, no problem. You can bring in a sound here and attach it to another oscillator and start getting some really, really interesting sounds. Cool, huh? Okay, so more technical viewers might notice that, well, there's a volume and a pan, but what about send? And not to worry, you can do sends on this. And not only can you do sends, they're actually CV controllable, which is really extra cool. So to demonstrate this, what I'm going to do is connect this SH01A synth. I've got this playing a, a simple pattern, and I'm going to connect it to channel 1 here like so. And when I turn that up, you should be able to hear it. Right, so pretty basic pattern. And it is super dry. So if we want to convert this sound, if we want to be able to send this off to this even tight H9, here's how we do it. I've got a stackable tip-top cable here. And I'm going to plug it into channels 1 and 2. And basically what I'm going to do is split the output of this synth and have it come into channels 1 and 2. So as soon as I plug this in, there it is. You can hear it on channel 1, you can hear it on channel 2, and in both cases you can pan left and right. Okay, so now we've got the signal coming into channel 1 and being split and sent off to channel 2 as well. We've got identical signal coming into channels 1 and 2. Now, you can pick a channel, it doesn't really matter which one, but let's say you want channel 2 to be your CV controllable send. No problem. Here's the cable that goes off to this H9, and we're going to plug it into the direct output of channel 2. And what this does is, it separates channel 2 off from the rest of the mixer, and you no longer hear it at the output. Instead, the signal from channel 2 is being sent off to the eventide H9. And the output of the H9 is coming back on these two cables here, and this, again, is where the pass-through comes in super handy. Right, because you can now bring the signal from the H9 back into the mixer and still have two channels available for other sound sources that you'd like to use. Right, so let's go ahead and plug that in. And now you should have the super dry signal on channel 1. And the wet signal is now on channel 2. So now you have, uh, you can, if you decide you want super wet, you can do that. If you want a little bit of the effect, but mostly dry, you can do that. And what's extra cool is that both of these, you still have volume control over both of these channels. So um, if you wanted to, you could bring in an LFO and control the level of the, the send amount. And you could even, if you decided to, bring in the channels instead of bringing them through the pass-through inputs, what you could do is actually bring them in on channels 3 and 4, and then you get complete control over pan, volume, on both channels. So there's a lot of uh, creativity and flexibility that's available to you uh, in both sending and returning the signals from whatever external sound processing unit that you'd like to use. All right, so for this last example, we're going to take everything that we've learned in the previous examples and throw it together and hopefully come up with something pretty cool. All right, so here we go. We're going to take a sine wave out of a dope for oscillator and put it into channel one. And that should sound like this. Pretty standard stuff. And a triangle wave, which is a little bit more buzzy, and put that into channel two. Sounds something like this. Okay, now I like this sound, but it's kind of boring, so I'm going to bring in an LFO and use that to control pan, like so. It's a little bit fast, so maybe we can slow that down. Okay. And on channel 1, it's still very static, right? So we just have a... But the cool thing is, if you turn the volume all the way down, this is a good tip, if you turn this all the way down 
and you use an ADSR envelope as the volume control, you've effectively turned this channel into a super high grade VCA. Okay, so check this out. So we have here a dope for quad ADSR. I'm only using one channel. It's coming out into an attenuverter and up into the uh, up into the mixer. And so now we're hearing this pattern. And let's bring channel two back in. It's kind of cool, you know. It's kind of kind of happening. So what I'm going to do here is split this channel off and send it to this Eventide H9. I've got a cool delay effect going on here. And I'm both going to split it and send it here and also send it back into channel 3 as a dry signal. Okay? And so we're going to do that by taking one of these stackable cables from Tip Top. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you can just use a multiple like this one and uh, just split the signal. So as soon as I plug this in, it's going to stop coming out of the master output, but that's okay. Plug it into the input of channel 3. Now we should hear it again on channel 3. And we're also going to send this not only to channel 3, but also off to the, to the eventide here. Okay? And the reason you don't hear the eventide right now is because we don't have the returns of the eventide coming back yet, but we will as soon as we plug these in. Okay, and that's where the pass-through comes in super handy. So let's go ahead and plug that in. All right. And as a special bonus, I've got a little bit of a, a drum pattern here with the grids and the tip top happening. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring that in on channel four. And pretty soon we'll have some half decent techno happening. Yeah. So, yeah, I like that. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned at all is we don't just make a mixer, we also have a stereo filter down here, which lets you do some really cool stuff. And I'm just going to demonstrate that as a little teaser for our next video, which will show off how to use the F1 stereo filter, which is down here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and disconnect these and connect them to the, to the F1 stereo filter and then take the output of the mixer and run it through the filter. All right. And I've got that being controlled with this. Can switch to the uh, four pole. There you have it folks hope you've enjoyed this presentation if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comments below and uh, thanks for checking us out <laughs>